What's up peeps, it's your boy CJ, and today we're going to review the Seiko SNK805. Let's get it. Alright, the Seiko SNK805. Let's get straight to it. Let's get this housekeeping out the way. Alright, remember, if you're new to the channel, please support your boy by liking this video, subscribing, and commenting down below what you thought of the review, as well as the watch in general. All right, let's get straight to it. So the Seiko SNK805 has a 316 l stainless steel case, case size of 37 millimeters, thickness of 10.5 millimeters, lug to lug of 43 millimeters, lug width of 18 millimeters, crystal is a flat hardlex, and it has Luma Bright Loom. It also features 30 meters of water resistance and the movement inside this bad boy is the 7S26, which features plus or minus 40 hours of power reserve. All this in a package of 200 Australian dollars, which is around 150 to 170 US dollars. So let's have a closer look at this bad boy. Okay, so here's the 805 on my seven inch wrist. I mean, that 37 millimeter case size is quite small as well as that 43 millimeter lug to lug it's making it wear extremely dainty but also pretty comfortable on wrist that small size while isn't going to be everyone's favorite it's definitely gonna go under any cuff if you choose to wear it under a cuff um or just blend in with any environment more or less i mean let's have a look at this beautiful pocket shot here as you can see, it fits really nice, looks the part. It's not overbearing, you know, it's, I think it, I think it's pretty slick looking. Okay, so let's get a closer look at this beauty. So the Seiko 5 clearly has this field, almost pilot watch Flieger inspiration with that type B layout on the dial. And if you don't know, that means you got the inner track showing the 1 to 12 hour markings, and then you got the minutes on the outer edge of that bezel. You also got that day and date, which is extremely handy in a beautiful cutout frame, um, red representing the, the Sunday. And then that nice applied logo, um, or that classic Seiko 5 logo with the shield, which I think is a really cool touch. Um, makes you know you've got something a bit retro on the wrist. I think it's pretty plain and simple, which is something you find on most field watches, but it's a nice touch. It has a little bit of character with those loom pipped markings there at the five minute points across the dial on the edges, and then that rehort is just a nice brush metallic sort of insert, which is pretty clean. I love that red tip on the second hand and how it just sweeps nice and smooth with that lollipop counterbalance. Let's move on to this actual case itself. So nothing too crazy in terms of polishing or chamfered edges or even um, brushing. It's more or less all bead blasted throughout. Um, the lugs are nice and stubby, nice and close to the, to the actual body of the case. And then you got that recessed crown, which uh, we'll be talking about a little bit later. Nice exhibition case back here showing off that beautiful mechanical movement and I think is a really cool touch um, for any person who's getting into the hobby in general and wants to get their first mechanical watch. This is a nice portal into this world of horology that we are so obsessed about. Pretty much overall, that's really what the Seiko 5 has to offer in terms of actual features. Um, it does have this nice strap. Admittedly, at first, it is quite stiff and um, firm, but I've had it for a number of years now, and it only takes about a couple of days to actually get quite soft, as you can see. It's very malleable at this point. It does have this nice leather padding that's stitched on as well for the holes. Um, and overall, it's held up pretty well. I have used it quite a bit, so it's definitely got its wear and tear. You got that matching bead blasted finish on the buckle and tang, as well as these uh, keepers here which is a nice um, uniform look. 
Okay, so the Seiko 5 here is pretty legible in terms of reading the time very easily. As you can see, it's just a nice matte green or olive green dial with that beautiful white uh, printed indices and markings for the minutes and the hours, as well as the hands. Nothing too special uh, in terms of anything being applied, but I definitely think when it comes to legibility, you're not gonna have any trouble telling the time very quickly and easily. Um, so let's have a look at how this bad boy fares uh, under low light. Okay, so, I mean, when it comes to Loom, Seiko is definitely king. And this is quite an old watch and features some Luma right, but even though those indices and markers at the minute points are really small, you can see they are glowing so bright. I mean, Seiko just nails it. There's definitely some illumination here in the studio, but clearly that is just popping. You can imagine this under complete darkness. It will really hold its own against most. Um, when it comes to actual length of how long it lasts, it lasts pretty long. Um, there's been many nights when I've actually not even boosted up in the sun. I've woken up in the middle of the night and uh, found this bad boy just shining through the case. So um, very impressed with the loom here and I'm sure you will be as well. Okay, so pros and cons. Um, for me, I'll start off with the pros. As much as this is clearly not decided on whether it's a field or a pilot watch, I quite like that sort of aesthetic, um, especially with the bead blasted case. It really gives off that sort of rugged, can do anything, go anywhere sort of feel. And uh, can take a beating and you don't have to think too much about the watch, which is something I really appreciate, especially when you're, you know, doing certain um, tasks. You don't really want to be concerned too much about the watch you're wearing. So I feel like Seiko's really nailed that uh, boots on the ground effect um, with, with the watch itself. I really do love the day and date. Um, having a date is always handy. And then the actual date complication as well uh, helps up quite a bit really like the choice of the applied logo with the actual Seiko 5 shield. I think it looks really cool and um, I love the Type B dial, dial layout as well. Um, now onto some of the cons. Uh, the major con here is actually the movement itself. Um, it's not hacking or hand winding, uh, which is really disappointing. So it means you're going to have to do the classic Seiko shuffle and spin that rotor at the back uh, so that you can get this bad boy moving and, and ticking away, um, which is to me really annoying. I, I quite like the feeling of winding a watch in the morning, getting its uh, juices flowing so that you can go throughout your day, but to actually pick the watch up and, and do this to really get it started is uh, not the most pleasurable experience for, for myself. Um, on top of that, the crown choice on this. It's extremely small. It is recessed, but um, I feel like that amount of give is really terrible, especially when you're trying to select the day and date. It goes further in and makes it just a tad bit harder. I mean, if you got dainty fingers, maybe this is not so much of a problem for you, but for myself, this is <laughs> quite annoying and I feel like it will be for most. So the crown is a definite con on this watch. Uh, having a bigger crown may have looked slightly out of place, but I feel like they could have easily done away with that by uh, maybe recessing it further into the case. Um, that could have solved that problem. Now, the actual case back. Again, if you are getting your first automatic watch, I cannot recommend this one enough, simply because it gives you exactly what you're after. You want something mechanical, you want to move away from the quartz, and now you get to see that in in the flesh or in the machine, as we could say. That beautiful heartbeat there at the back, it's just a beautiful sight and one that any person getting into the hobby would really appreciate. I feel like Seiko could have done 
away with all of the branding on the actual crystal itself, it's quite distracting and takes away from that experience from uh, actually looking through that case back. So to me, that's a con, but it is nice that they've provided that exhibition case back. The strap, um, I really like it. I didn't at first, only because of how stiff it was, but like I said, it takes a day or two after real wear and uh, you won't have any problems. It's nice and supple and soft. So I actually don't mind this. A lot of people give it a lot of gripe um, and I feel like that's just people regurgitating what everybody else is saying, to be honest, because I don't have any problems with this strap. I've felt other straps that are way more expensive and uh, feel less in, in terms of quality, but this is quite nice. That bead bastard finish as well on the buckle and tang is a really nice touch as well. So no problems there. So my final thoughts on the Seiko SNK 805. I think it's a really cool watch. Um, it's it's clearly nothing too special. When I purchased mine, it was around 120 Australian dollars. That was a few years ago. Now at that 200 Australian dollar mark, it's really hard to justify because you could easily get something like a a new you know Dress KX or SNK that they that they have to offer now with the Seiko 5 range. Um, there's modern uh, reinterpretations of this particular model itself, but uh, I do think it's quite nice. It's small, especially nowadays leaning towards that trend of smaller cases. This might fit just right in, but do take note that that crown is really going to be a problem for most, um, as well as the movement itself when it comes to that actual Seiko shuffle. So I'm not really a big fan of that and the crown and this is why this particular watch is actually sat in a drawer for quite a long time because the usability is more of a chore than an enjoyment but when it comes to your first automatic watch 100% you will be satisfied and you will really love it you will grow in a, a certain attachment to the watch there's a there's a feeling you will have with it for sure because of the fact that it's not a quartz so I highly recommend it, but remember, it's not perfect. And maybe that's why it's such a classic. So those are my thoughts. Well, there it is, the Seiko SNK 805. A really cool first addition into the hobby. Perfect gateway watch into mechanical timepieces. And I highly suggest anybody who's getting into this hobby watching this video to dip your toe into the mechanical world by making this your first piece. Uh, it's really cool, especially for that exhibition case back. And I feel like it's the perfect watch to really get your juices flowing when it comes to the mechanical side of this hobby. Let me know down in the comments below what was your first watch, first mechanical watch. And remember to watch out.